Hello. Hey, hey. Can you hear me, Sean? I can, but I got a little bit of an echo right now, so... All right. Let's see if I can take care of that echo. Am I echoing on your end? No. It's all right. I guess I'll just deal with the echo then. We should just let the list see what the listeners think about the... If there's an echo for them. Just close your Facebook browser. That's probably what it is. Uh, that's not open, but... Strange. All right. All right. Well, anyway, uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to our live stream. And how's everyone doing out there? Uh, Star Wars week. It's a big week. We're, we get, we're getting episode nine this week. We're getting The Mandalorian early this week. And we got a ton of articles from FFG. So we got a lot of awesome stuff. Um, Sean, you excited? You got, you got your tickets for episode nine? What do you, what do you got going on? Uh, episode nine. I actually got tickets for Jumanji two. I thought that was the big release. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I actually don't have tickets for episode uh, nine because, uh, well, I can't take the baby. Uh, I can't take my wife because somebody's got to look after the baby, and then there's just me. So I probably will go, but it'll probably be like a real late night show, and I'll probably be a solo endeavor. So unless I can uh, find a friend uh, to Dang. go, but yeah. It's, it's pretty sold out over here. I don't know about Canada, but... Well, it just depends what night, because uh, kind of uh, survival of the fittest get into the theater, so you may just have to uh, trek through the snow, and uh, it depends on the proximity. I live about three minutes away from the theater, so oh, I'm, nice. fairly, I'm fairly close, nice. so I can walk there if the roads are closed. That's cool. For sure. All right. Um, yeah, I'm pretty hyped about it. Uh, so many trailers, so many teasers, a lot of Palpatine voice stuff coming out getting real hyped for that hopefully he's awesome in this movie hopefully he's got a bunch of screen time i don't know what's going on but definitely hearing him hearing his voice a lot in these trailers so pretty excited for that yeah Um, joe we we were pre-chatting and and joe's like super stoked like this is like it's literally like the best week of the year for joe here so he's talking about mandalorian star wars dropping uh, you it's know, Christmas. FFG articles. It's just, uh, it's it's Christmas here. Yep. You know, Merry I'm here. Christmas s- to me, thank you, Disney. Yeah, I'm here <laughs> slogging away, working in the studio, like slaved <laughs> all day yesterday, just working. Joe's just uh, taking it all in. Now he's got time just, to go buy tickets. I'm just partying. Yep. Yeah. I bought my tickets the day they went on sale, like four months ago. So, yeah, that's call that fandom. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, um, let's jump into talking about Legion. Okay, because we got a we lot that. of new news. So why don't we go through? I'm sure everyone's seen all these articles. If you've been on social media for the last week, it's been nonstop spammed. So I'm sure you guys are all well aware. But we're just going to talk about some of the stuff we saw last week and some stuff a little more exciting than others. But you know, we'll 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 jump right into it. So what do you got for us, Sean? Are we going to go to FFG articles first? Or yeah, what whatever you got, whatever you got lined up, we'll t- we'll talk about it. Okay, well let's. Uh, I think uh, let let's do the games first. But first and foremost, let's talk about. Uh, you talk about your games because I want you to talk about um, kind of the experience you had with uh, previewing the new tokens. Oh, okay, sure. So yeah. yeah, as you guys know, we've got our Patreon tokens. Um, you know, we've mentioned it a million times, and. Um, with some of the new tokens we've been sending out this week and last week were um, we had shield tokens and we had like exhausted comms tokens. So it's, they're not, a, they're not a token that normally comes in cardboard for the game. They're a token that's like our own creation, but we thought they were like a really nice utility tool to have. So we're doing a series of them. So anything in the game that exhausts, um, whether it's a comms upgrade or whether it's a weapons upgrade, we're doing tokens for that. Um, so the first ones we sent out were the exhausted comms tokens. And I I, uh, I played a game. I talked about this um, the last time we were talking about CIS lists and playing games. I said I wanted to try Dooku Grievous, you know, because I tried Dooku by himself. I tried Grievous by himself. And I wanted to try the two of them together. So I ran an eight activation list 
Dooku Grievous, six sets of B1s. Uh, four of the B1s had E5Cs. Two of them had the Rockets and the HQ uplink. So it was really nice to be able to use these exhausted comms tokens to just lay on the table um, to show that I used my HQ uplink. And because I like spread my two uh, HQ uplink units apart, basically on both ends of the chain for uh, issuing the coordinate orders for the droids, it was really easy to keep track of which ones used their uplinks, which ones didn't. When when I would recover, I would just take the token off the table, signifying that, you know, that 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 unit can then uplink again. I could put the token on the table to say the uplink's exhausted. And I don't have to mess with cards and turning cards sideways and finagling stuff and trying to distinguish, oh, this card goes to this unit, this card goes to this unit. It was just really simple to put a little token on the table. And um, I played my opponent, Sean, who's also a patron of ours, um, also was running uplinks, so I gave him his tokens. He was running uh, dewbacks with HQ uplinks. And he loved them. I loved them. It, it kept the board state really clean and easy to interpret and easy to understand. And I think this is going to be a really good thing that you guys are going to like when you get them in your hands. And we're going to do them for weapons, force powers, and we're sending out several of each. So even if you're running like four HQ uplinks in a list, you can put four tokens on the table. So I think these are a good thing. I think it was kind of cool too um, for them. Like, so I I typically leave my HQ uplinks and all my cards rather in little card sleeves, and so what mm -hmm. I typically do is I'll just tap the entire page. Um, however, one of the things that I discovered was I also like to take my dead models and put them on my page just to signify yeah. which unit is which. But then, I mean, if you're dealing with droids and you're trying to like move a page and it's got like, you know, six or seven battle droids on there because the units are a lot bigger, then it just becomes a, you know, logistics nightmare of trying to move things. I also don't like taking out individual cards and turning them because when you're putting your tokens or your dice or your movement sticks kind of on your player edge, it's very easy to hit or spin a card. Mm -hmm. I never want to get myself in that awkward situation where I'm like trying to convince my opponent um, that, oh, I, I hit this uplink by accident you know right. it was it was straight but now it's tapped or vice right. versa it's right. like oh you look down and you're like oh no i guess i untap that and then your opponent's like oh actually that wasn't the one you did and then you get in that there's that weird game state where you're trying to like it's never going to feel good no matter how that comes out of you trying to convince your opponent so i think mm -hmm. with with the cleanup phase at the end where you see that token it's like okay no this will be a token it's not green it's going mm -hmm. to stay out so I know that I'm not picking that up. And then it's kind of a reminder too for you on that next activation. It's like, okay, well, one of the actions I might want to do with that unit is, is um, you know, recover versus right. having cards that are kind of nondescript in front of you marking individual units that could be redundant. And you're like, mm -hmm. uh, which one is that? Or was that that one? It, it just yeah. It's just a nice way of... You're thinking about a hundred things. The last mm -hmm. thing you want to do is forget something that's really instrumental probably to that turn, so... I think that's right, a really right. cool token to have. Yeah, and there's a bunch of ways you can use it, too. You can put it on the table. We send you enough. Like, even the lowest tier is going to get more than one. So you could put it on the table. You could put one on the table and one on your card. You could put one just on your card so you don't have to unsleeve it just to mark it. Any, you know, any way you want to use them is your choice, but it's just a little tool for people to use. And I think... We're seeing a lot of exhaustible upgrades coming out, even not just weapons and force powers anymore. It's like you see offensive push is coming out. It's like, okay, you get tactical one on an exhaustible, exhaustible ability, right? So you're, you're maybe going to use that like one time per game or maybe twice. Um, yep. So it's going to be nice to have little tokens to track that stuff and then just be like, okay, it's, it's, it's done and it's a little yep. cleaner. Um, I've definitely been in plenty of situations where I was like, we got to rewind this board state. I don't remember what's going on. Or like, it happened to me a lot when I was playing sabs. It was like, oh, multiple sab bombs get detonated and now we're at four, five, six suppression on every unit in this area. And it's like, the stack gets knocked over and which suppression goes where and what did I exhaust? And this one used stims and this one. So we're just trying to clean all that stuff up. Um, yep. We, you know, Fantasy Flight made the suppression one and the the nice new suppression three. So we made our 
version of that token with a three and a one, you know? So we've got a lot of those things coming that'll hopefully help with that. Something nobody's so. ever said. I wish Fantasy Flight would make some more tokens for this game. <laughs> yeah, right? Like It seems yeah. like every every couple of releases we get new tokens. But yeah, hey, for sure. That's for all sure. right. You know? So how did your Grievous Dooku game go? Awesome for me. I feel I feel bad <laughs> for saying me. this, but um, <laughs> nice. my opponent played a like double dewback gun line with Veers and some shore troopers and a sniper. And long story short, we played intercept the transmissions on a table that was set up to have kind of a nice large line of sight blocking piece of terrain towards the center of the board, and and I was basically just able to. We played. We had major offensive, so we we started in the corners. You know, the nice thing about major offensive and intercept the transmissions is that like, you can literally keep a unit in your deployment zone and score on the objective, which yeah. is exactly what I I parked one of my rocket squads there, and they didn't move the entire game. They shoot at range four, but basically, long story short, Dooku and Grievous, just the two of them, almost tabled him. Um, at the end of the game, I want to say I lost. I took a picture of it. I lost, I think, nine collective. Yeah, it was, like, it was like eight or it was like eight or nine models for sure. And it wasn't even. It wasn't like eight from a single activation. It was like two, four, and like two or something. So I didn't lose any activations, and I think we called the game when he just had like Veers and a sniper alive. Mm. So it was, and and basically all of that work was done just by Dooku and Grievous. Like I back believe to it. Back one pips was ridiculous. Yeah. So. Yep. And and I you like got the whole. Yeah. Man, one keyword, and I won't talk too much about uh, about Dooku, of course, but um, one keyword that I think is pretty easy to overlook uh, the power of is is scatter. Yes, I found that. Man, very, it is yeah. so, so good. And then mm-hmm. scatter coupled with, um, you know, the ability to like either choke or depending on where exactly you are, the ability to uh, do a force pull or force push, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And then and then actually do a shot off that to, to then recohere again. So there's there's lots of things that you can you can do in combination with scatter and force push. Um, yeah, I- it's it's funny because I think Operative Vader has scatter as well, right? He might yeah. on his like ranged attack. Right. So I'm. This is what I'm thinking. I'm like, w- one thing I noticed in particular just from this Dooku Grievous game is that I was actually able to effectively use a scatter attack from Dooku to push something into charge range of Grievous. Yep. And I think you can do the same thing with Vader. You could scatter something into like Royal Guard charge range. So yeah. there's a lot of like range manipulation that if you're really into like measuring and you're really technical setups, that you can really make some like interesting, powerful plays and combos and pull those off with those units. Um, I love Dooku Grievous. Like I was worried about eight activations, and I certainly still worry about eight activations. It's it's a mm-hmm. little low, even in turn one. Like you're you're just gonna sit there for two or three activations, um, and you just gotta position correctly and deal with that. But once you can get those two in, if you can keep them pretty healthy going into like turn two, they're devastating. One of the um, one of the things I found really strong with. Uh with scatter was in skirmish games uh in the dawn condition Mm -hmm. so just putting a couple droids in standby um and then obviously staying out of that range two band um your opponent's got to either walk into the range two band to trigger that um which they generally aren't but then you Mm -hmm. can actually just run dooku out get him just inside that range two we talked about this in terms of showing but but i think it gets really um, uh, exaggerated almost in that dawn deploy in that dawn condition, um, mm-hmm. because you can you're a lot closer, yeah. and so you can set that up a lot earlier, um, and so you can trigger three, four standbys uh, because you have the activation control with four with four droids and, and Dooku. So it's like I'll let all my droids go first, and then I'll have Dooku go last. 
I'm going to get one of your units. I'm going to pull it in. I'm probably mm-hmm. going to just trigger three, four standbys, eviscerate a unit, and get and yep. get up an activation early, yep. um, which is really, really awesome. So that's one of the... And it's not even like... You don't even need to play a big pip card. You can play a standing orders and still get that off. So Yeah. I, uh, I didn't utilize any scatter standby tricks in this game. However, I did in a previous like solo Dooku game, and I really like that. It, it's yeah. so good, like you said, in Dawn or like in limited visibility, it's particularly strong, and it forces your opponent to make the tough decision. It's like, do I want to move forward, or do I want to sit here and do nothing for an entire turn while you set up? Yeah. You know, it's it's it's. Uh, it's like you almost guarantee you're going to lose one unit. Maybe you can throw a throwaway unit out or a low point unit. Uh, 40 point rebel tr- naked rebel troopers is a good example of that. But yeah, it's 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 a tough call. It's a good strong opener for. I, I, th- I think one of the I think one of the things that players want to consider is that there's no throwaway units in a, in a Dooku Grievous list without without a doubt. Every every unit is powerful. However, mm-hmm. you kind of don't really want to sacrifice units on your like as an opponent because one of your distinct advantages against that Dooku Grievous list is your activation control, is your number. Yeah. So like those yep. really cheap units actually become even more vulnerable and even you want to protect them even more because you want to maintain that. So I think that I think Dooku Grievous still goes after those cheap activations. I call them cheap yeah. just because they're you know they're weak. But um, you could force your opponent. Uh, I, I find those units are great late game. You want to push things. Yeah. You want to overwhelm. But if you're able to kind of force that hand and get, uh, I was playing a lot of skirmish this uh, this last week, and I was playing five activation against seven activation almost every single game. And by usually by mid turn, I'm usually still sitting at five, and I've I've topped the threshold, and I'm starting to whittle them down to four, three, two. Um, yep. Just because you're able to you're able to absorb multiple shots at a at a droid unit before it dies, unless it's like a flamer or or something really really heavy, um, but you're able to kind of bring mass early, kind of withdraw, leave Dooku in. Basically, the droids are a delivery vi- device for Dooku. Then mm-hmm. he just wrecks havoc, and then he starts he starts whittling down. I'll shoot this. I'll saber that. I'll choke this. I'll push that. Um, right. he, he's a he's a wrecking ball. Is the best way to describe him. Yeah. What I noticed. Um... I learned this lesson from just playing against John Griffin with my Palpatine list against his droids. And what I noticed with, with droids in general is that, like, you know, we've we've all seen that they don't save. <laughs> They're basically just a body count. So when you're playing Dooku Grievous, I think, like, the approach to take is just delete enough units. You don't even have to wipe out full core squads. You just need to get them down to, like, two-man squads so that, like, their ceiling is not high enough. Even if they roll, like, only crits and every miracle roll, their ceiling is not high enough to chew through 48 droid bodies. Yep. That's literally what, like, what I found. I was like, I just need to go in with both of my characters and get right in your lines and just start, like, killing core units. And at the end of the game, you're not going to be able to, like, push all 48 of my bodies off of all the objectives. You yes. know, it's, it's, that's what yesterday, I'm that's what Yesterday in my game, I put Dooku around a corner. I mm-hmm. popped him out so that I could just see two uh, rebel troopers. I couldn't get far enough to see the Z6, so I didn't want to. I shot them with lightning. Mm-hmm. I killed two. I cohered the Z6 forward after I killed the two I could see, then yep. choked that. Yeah, walked around the corner the next turn, choked mm-hmm. out the remaining commander, mm-hmm. walked out the next turn, choked out a heavy. Next turn, choked out a commander. He just he just goes through and he just yeah. chews up leaders I, and heavies. Yeah. leaders I and used, heavies. I used my ch- my choke to kill two medics in this game. Yep. It was like, all right, well, I don't even need to kill your heavies because killing your medic is more efficient than killing your heavies because you can't bring your heavies back. Mm-hmm. Four times or whatever so it's like oh get rid of his two medical droids and then the lightsaber and the lightning will do the rest yep and yeah and then it's like once you get grievous in there too and then play his one pip it's like all right everything's tied up in melee you probably almost one shot the unit that you're in melee with 
and then you shoot everything with your rifle in range one and it just it's explosive it's yep. really fun i love that list it's i think it's a style of play that i really like which is the like uh you know hide and then spring out and just like annihilate the, the yep. palpatine style explosive you know it's yep. very similar to palpatine it's it's almost like Grievous and Dooku, when they run together, feels like you're playing and now you will die like two or three times. It's like, it's sure. really fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, since we weren't going to talk about any droids or uh, Dooku Grievous, I'm glad we didn't. Uh, so what else What else do we got on here? So games play, we did that. Um, hobby related items before we get into the, uh, the articles. And folks in chat, um, whatever the topic is, throw it out. And if you got something to say about, you know, experience with Dooku, Grievous, droids, don't let us steer you away from that. But And if you're doing hobby stuff, let us know that too. So what do you got on the docket, uh, Joe? Oh, for hobby. Okay, so... Uh, happy to say that I finished another semester of grad school on Saturday, so now I have a lot more free time. Oh, so um, that's, a, that's an interesting hobby. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot more time in the, in the hobby space now. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm going to paint up the rest of my army. So I've got about half of my droid army painted. The other half is primed, so I just got to finish them. And then i got to base them. And I'm trying to get that all done before LVO and still bring something mm. that looks really cool. Um, I still actually I haven't even like really decided what I'm going to play at LVO, but I want to at least have this droid army done because like it's either going to be droids or probably Empire, and all my Empire stuff's done already. Right. So I'm just trying to play catch up with this so I can make that choice. I'll probably just fly there with all of it and freak out and pick something the morning of yeah. nice. <laughs> that's like nice. how i that's how it goes for me it's yeah. the al paz style right there yeah speaking <laughs> of al paz al congrats on your uh rally point went up in wisconsin yeah uh, that's pr- the, there's a funny story about that that i don't know if he wants me to tell or not but i'm just gonna embarrass him and tell real quick do it uh, and because this is this goes this goes along with something that we've been you know saying a lot. Uh, so Al t- makes a five hour drive up to this tournament on like a Saturday morning. Realizes when he gets there that he was go- he was planning to play Jin triple ATRTs with rotaries. He realizes when he gets there that he's missing his Jin command cards and he's missing his rotaries, but he has Tauntauns on him. So he runs a list with Jin with no Jin command cards, and then triple Tauntauns and wins the rally point, playing a list that he's never played, never practiced, and doesn't even have command cards for, and Tauntauns just carry the day. That's how broken those units are. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he just didn't play another Tauntaun player, and he just rolled everyone, basically. So that's pretty dumb. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just yeah. gonna put this up here for for Al real quick. Um, so uh, it's we're we're resetting the clock, Al. So we're waiting on that uh, 20, uh, 2020 uh, worlds invite. So or I guess it's twenty twenty one worlds invite. So you better start. He's better start RPQing right now. So yeah, <laughs> we're reset. We're resetting the Al Paz clock. Yeah, <laughs> but nonetheless, congrats, Al, on cheesing your way to a win with Tauntauns, as uh, most people have done, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're 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 a crutch when you're not good at legion you just play some tauntauns i guess just buy those models that auto win yep yep seems good <laughs> I, seems I good to play them. i refuse to play them in a competitive setting out of pride yeah fair enough chris yeah. is actually giving you the gears here in chat so he's uh he's telling <laughs> you uh that they're uh they're not broken joe they're just efficient oh okay sure fair Yep. Well, um, I did some hobby stuff too. I did this new space here. Um, yeah. It's way bigger than what you can see, but uh, so I moved uh, my entire other sound studio down to my other uh, place. So it's kind of like half of my hobby uh, gaming section. So that's still all on the other side in the work st- center. But um, in, f- in the foreground, you guys can't see. I've actually set up a, the three by three um, demo slash skirmish, uh, skirmish section. Um, I'm moving the overhead mount over, but one of the things is where my, where the camera and the computer is, 
um, I need to buy a 15 foot uh, USB micro USB cable because like you can buy like three foot ones in the store um, so I did order uh, order those so I have um, I just gotta wait to run those and then we can have the uh, the camera right over there so um, <laughs> Awesome. John is uh, telling us that we have a professional looking sound studio and he wants to know uh, the plant is, is uh, the, the key feature of this entire place. So <laughs> I, I knew people were going to love the plant. It's, it's really yeah. nice. It's, uh, it's going to look as lush as, as this forever uh, because they are not real. Um, but uh, I'm not I, supposed I, to tell people that. Oh, sorry. They're, they're, <laughs> absolutely, they're imported from uh, Brazil. They're tropical. Yeah. Meticulously <laughs> watered every day. He snips off little pieces of them and uses them yep. as basic material. Oh, yeah. No, I, this, is, this is homebrew base material right here for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but unrelated to, uh, so switching this over. So, um, there's, there's one, th so shameless plug for the Patreon, uh, on my, on my, uh, studio side, there's, uh, my, my goals. I'm always using my, uh, the Patreon stuff to kind of reinvest in, and fund. So, um, I'm in the process right now of getting, uh, probably take a little bit as the Patreon grows, but I'm getting two, uh, 1320 LED, uh, light panels. I'm getting two of those. So it'll be like roughly like 2,600 LEDs. Um, and they'll actually light the entire other side of the studio. So then the, the game space will be basically like a, like in a light box. So everything will be exceptionally bright. And, um, and then we'll bring you guys all the, um, all the how to's and all the tutorials on, on the Legion Academy side of things as well. So one of the things we felt was our space that we had before was a little bit limiting. We were kind of stuck at range two, three, um, but we'll be able to play and show you guys on a full three by three, uh, skirmish table. So, um, that's all set up, ready to go. Just waiting on a cable that's on its way and then we'll change the lighting over here, uh, and get that done. So that's happening nice. on the hobby side. And then I also did some droid hobbying. So let me just swap over here. And I'll show you guys what I did. So let's make sure this will focus for us. Perfect, you guys should be able to see that. Um, yep. So I've been working on getting my uh, my droids ready. So this is just early stages, but here's my uh, my five arm Grievous. Um, and so <laughs> nice. I just did, so I just, Alex Davey told me I can have as many arms as I want, so you just leave me alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Grievous, just done up with the contrast. And so I'm just working on uh, bringing up the highlights just to add a little bit more of a a look and as I told you guys I'm going for that German uh, Panzer Grey type color. Um, here I have the uh, the late laziest rocket uh, launcher droid in in the army. Uh, so he's on <laughs> he's just on coffee break here. Yeah. Um, there we go. Let me bring this. There we go. So it'll focus a bit better. There we go. So he's just hanging out, sitting there. Um, here I have the droid I was talking about before with the uh, I've lost my leg and so he's just kind of checking that out as it snapped off. Um, and there's the guy. He kind of looks like he's giving people the finger, so I kind of like that. Um, if you're offended by it, I have another model. I'll swap it out. Don't worry. Yeah. Let's make so, sure we're not offended. And then, and then I'm doing these up in ice spaces. So this is just my rock here, but then the, the flat parts, the parts that are actually touching the uh, still in the plastic, that'll actually be filled with an acrylic resin. And so that'll, that'll be ice. So the idea is that his leg got kind of frozen in the ice and then snapped off here. Awesome. And then we awesome. have the uh, the Al Captain Morgan uh, pose for the the unit leader here. <laughs> so he's doing the uh, you know the one leg up and uh, surveying yeah. the area. So or or Christopher Columbus type, whatever whatever you prefer, whatever your yeah. your flavor of uh, you know uh, historical reference is here. So I'm gonna go with Captain Morgan. So that's him. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> yeah. So it's really fun. All my all my droids I've uh, I've done up in uh, in different poses. So um, mm -hmm. takes a little longer to build fifty four when you're you're constantly changing every one of them. So yeah, but no, they look great. So are you gonna paint the the rocks like gray or do some yeah. dry brushing? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do them um, probably start with an anthracite gray, uh, which is like a really kind of almost like a black gray, uh, mm -hmm. and then I'll bring those up. But um, when I uh, when I go ahead and add the the snow effect, um, it will naturally kind of lighten it up, and so I yeah. kind of want to have that dark undertone because a lot of those tops of those um, cork will get covered in snow anyway. So it's mm -hmm. just going to be the kind of the exposed edges, and then truthfully, half of that's going to have the ice brought up. So I want that real dark recess. Um, so although they're going to be dark, they were re really aren't going to appear um, much other than ice and snow, uh, truthfully yeah. on the base. So just that occasional spot that may shine through. So. Yeah, it's gonna look good. I'm excited to see the end product, man. It's gonna look yeah. really good. 
I just got to uh, focus. So that's my that's kind of my my winter break um, project, um, mm-hmm. as well as I'm doing. Uh, I think I talked about. It, I'm not really sure, but um, I'm doing up a kashik table. Um, so just something for the studio. I wanted to have it. I kind of want to reveal at the same time we start doing the um, the how tos and the bat reps over there. But what I'm going to do is. Um, I'm going to build the the tree. It's going to be about three foot, foot in size, mm-hmm. um, but the tree canopy. I want to do a full canopy, but the canopy itself, I'm going to have actually removable, so we can do top downs, so that you can actually see the platforms and stuff in the tree. But then other times when you're playing like side side on or you're playing with your opponent, you actually put the tree canopies back on. So it's going to be. I'm, I'm going to do that up on the Patreon. So I'm going to do a live update every day on that for patrons. And so you nice. kind of, and I'm gonna try to do it in a three week period. So I'm gonna really work crazy because I'm I'm home, so I can I can put in like yeah. you know 10, 15 hour days. Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of blitz that and get that out. So if you guys are interested in following that project, you follow that via Patreon. Um, but of course, I'll have lots of stuff, and the end product will appear here on the studio uh, on the Legion Academy rather. Um, so you guys will see that. You just won't see the work in progress or the how to kind of thing of that. So nice. Oh man, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's my winter break. So, you know, cool. take, take off work and, and work. One hobby at a time. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. Well, All right. you want to jump, in, wanted to yeah. jump into FFG stuff? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so what we're going to do here real quick is I'm just going to go to the FFG site, um, just sort of scroll through, show you guys where they are on there, what they are, and then we're going to, we actually have some splash screens just so we can kind of uh, condense the information into a into a usable space. But this is the interactive part of the show where we're all going to use our speculation and really squinty eyes to try to read and decipher all the text that is, you know, the FFG is known to put on there. So they have fantastic art amazing things and they can't ever get that focus on those cards just right for us so it's like they purposely it's mess with us like they do that on purpose Geez, somebody needs to write them a letter an angry yeah. letter well this word stiffly worded anyway all yeah. right so let's go over here you guys don't need to see my desktop but there we go and pop over here to um and this is in no particular order but uh here's we have the rules of engagement um, so I'm not sure if you guys are, yeah, you guys can see all this down there. Um, I just see what you guys could actually see. So, um, yeah, so the rules of engagement here is basically the equivalent of what we've known before as the priority supplies. Uh, this one's referred to as vital assets. Good name. Um, box art's really cool. Um, and then we'll talk about this stuff a little bit more in depth, but here you have the, uh, the cargo, uh, floating cargo plates um Mm. definitely some sort of bomb of some sort and then we got some cargo and i really like um the the hostages however what i like more is the prospect of now there's um i think you can use any mini here so if you've got like some third party stuff and shapeway stuff and and i'm not saying go buy that stuff but i mean somebody out there is selling that stuff so i what did what came to mind when I seen this very uh, first thing was I seen some very uh, well done and cleverly made baby Yodas. Oh my god! <laughs> stole the word. Hey, I asked Alex. I was like, "When's Baby Yoda coming out?" He's like, mm-hmm. "Hey, it's probably it would probably make a good objective marker." He did say that. And yep. then we get a hostage article. Yep. So hot <laughs> hot take on that. Um, Alex Alex was trying to lead us down a path. We didn't take the uh, breadcrumbs very well, but. Yeah. Yep. So um, that's I love it. I well the cool the okay, so you look at this right now and you're thinking, okay, this is Clone Wars era, right? Yep. Like the hostages you see are essentially from the like the Clone Wars T V show. Yep. So I mean there's nothing stopping you from getting a third party model or getting an Imperial assault model or just, you know, converting a stormtrooper with a helmet off and maybe a cool head swap or something and mm-hmm. just making your own using this same size base and making any hostage that you want. Why not because do like really, a, a yeah. Chewbacca done up in like shackles or something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. like it, the, the, there's yeah, exactly. So it's like it's just an objective marker at the end of the day. So there's a lot of cool customizations that you can do. For sure. And then we got some some deployment uh, and uh, what, what are these referred to as? They're referred to as supply. Supply, yes. yeah, 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 supply drops. This is, 
this is something interesting. I could have swore in the article it kind of likened there's going to be like a whole stack of these. Yeah, and there is. I think it says just, something in here. I'm uh, thinking it reminds me of a the concept scene. So it reminds me of the concept of like an X-Wing damage deck for all yeah. you X-Wing players out there. Mm-hmm. It's like I got a little stack of cards and I'm just going to flip it over and see what I get, you know? Yep. Except that it seems like these are benefits and not negatives. Yeah, like the I guess maybe, and maybe it's more along the lines of like how much of a benefit is it to you? Um, right, but these are cool. I mean, it's like back to canister. You just get treat one capacity, whatever, probably one. It's like, okay, I could just bring something back to life that I just didn't have to pay points for. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be an interesting objective for sure. It also right. begs the question: Do you have to? It's just like who's responsible for carrying these decks around when it comes to tournament play? The person, yeah. you know, it's like it's like a, another ancillary thing you got to lug around. Right. But I like it. I like it. I'm okay with it. So we'll we'll, de- we'll sort of uh, FYI we'll kind of deep dive into these in a minute. Um, I'm just going to scroll through the rest of the articles here real quick. But you guys in chat, uh, chat's already kind of blowing up about uh, some of these things. So I'll I'll skip ahead and then we'll we'll cycle back around to these uh, these things for sure. Um, obviously tonight the title of the show we talked about covert ops. Um, and I'll quickly scroll through this. So we got Iden Versio and ID10, and then Cassian Andor and K2SO, of course. Um, we mm-hmm. saw a few, I want to say even, geez, uh, over a month ago, some spoilers that were kind of put up. Um, there was some talk about whether yeah. they were fan made, whether they were real. Looks pretty real to me. Um, so here yep. we are um, with this. Definitely, and- definitely wasn't a surprise when these got announced. It was mm-hmm. more like the. The overall internet reaction was like, okay, cool, finally, thank you. Yeah, finally, thanks for clearing <laughs> that up. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's awesome. I mean, I love all the characters. So, uh, I mean, K2 and Cassian, come on. Look at that yeah. K2 skull. So I'm not like, really a huge lore person, but I'm actually um, listening to, in between listening to the when the podcasts aren't out, all the podcasts are dropping, I'm listening to Inferno Squadron. So I'm kind of just getting versed awesome. in, in Iden, 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 uh, Iden Versio um, and kind yeah. of the, uh, it's it's kind of cool for me to actually get uh, an image of the droid. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because... Well, here's the thing. I mean, you don't, you're not a video gamer, right? No. No. Nope. So this this is purely a character that was created for a video game. Right. So you played through her entire story if you played Battlefront and then the book was the book came out after. Oh, so okay. it's funny cuz you're like, "Oh, I'm seeing the droid for the first time," but the droid was like an integral part of that entire game. And it's really cool because in that game, you know, you use the droid to like hack stuff and scout stuff and give you heals and do some scanning and all this stuff. So I'm, I'm interested to see how they're going to incorporate that in the game or if they are, um, because it looks like, you know, it's, you're not really getting the full spoiler on like what the droid is going to do. Right. But it's going to do something. So that's pretty cool. And that'll definitely be a speculation part of the show for, for sure tonight. So audience mm-hmm. uh, stay tuned here. Um, and then of course the, uh, the much anticipated and probably the best uh, article of the bunch is the, the paint set. Yeah. Um, Everyone was really happy about it when they, <laughs> when they I, announced it. it Seems I mean, like it got a lot of good press. I, I I just, so I don't like to knock really uh, much of anything from FFG, uh, and I'm not knocking this at all. No, same. I just I'm think that the timing was yeah. just off for this. The like timing. Yep. If you drop this when you drop the Clone Wars release, and I have no idea, and I'm certain that if that was possible, they would have done so. I doubt this was just pushed because. Um, but it would have been awesome. People and people walking in to pick up their Clone Wars sets, and they see this right beside, and it's like, oh, the image of this matches the image of this. I need this. I'm just getting in the right. hobby. Boom, yes. staple these together. I mean, that can yep. certainly happen now. So let's not, mm-hmm. you know, let's not forget that people are still getting this hobby every single day. Um, I just, yep. for me, um, y- you know what? I I probably won't pick these up only because, like, I literally have four or five hundred bottles of paint here already. Same. Same. However, yep. however, this right here, when I'm selling the game, uh, meaning you know, being an ambassador for the game, this will be a recommendation that I make to those new people. A hundred percent. Only because I... there's a convenience of getting it all in one go. 
Yep, I've said this. I've said this on record about the previous paint sets. I think they're a great idea. Um, I think that they're affordably priced for what you get. And they're a good thing to pick up for starting new players who don't own any paints yet. It's like the perfect little package. Um, is it robust enough to get you through all your painting needs? Absolutely not. But it's an easy sell to someone who's never played a hobby game before. Yep. And I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, I, I'm in a bunch of other Star Wars-related Facebook groups and stuff that aren't just Legion. And um, one of the things that I was really excited to see today, and it was big press um, in terms of the game, is that Sam Witwer, he's the guy who voices Darth Maul in Rebels and the Clone Wars and did the voiceover for Darth Maul in Solo. Um, he's also done other voices for, like, the Clone Wars and stuff. I think he did Palpatine at one point. Um, he posted on Twitter today that like he's currently playing and painting Droidicas for Legion. And he was like promoting Legion and clearly he plays, which is awesome. So I saw that tweet get spammed out on like a ton of other Facebook groups that are just more generic Star Wars ones. And in those comments, I saw a ton of people that are like, I just bought this game. I didn't even know there was a miniatures game. I didn't even know that you could buy these miniatures and stuff. So I think it's per like it just goes to show you there are constantly new people coming in who yep. will find a need for this. So I don't want to knock it. I think it's a great idea. But again, you're right. The timing was a little weird because everyone was mm -hmm. kind of angry about the delays. We were promised a bunch of articles, and then this was, was the first article, and everyone's like, rabble, rabble, rabble. We wanted new models. So, and whatever. It is what it for, is. Yep, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just jump back into um, us for a second. So uh, so that that's the articles. Um, we got uh, just K Cassian, K2. Um, mm -hmm. We got Aiden and uh, Android ID10. Um, and then we got the asset, uh, the vital asset set. And then, of course, we, we have the paint. So... Um, we got tons of people in chat, so we got more to chat about. So uh, I don't care where we go, but why don't we just start at the top and go uh, with the Cassian drop? Cool. Let's. I want to see and hear people's thoughts on this for sure. So we're not going to do a ton of of like you know we can all see the screen. Uh, well, yeah, so we can all squint at the same screen uh, to kind of figure out what uh, what is on here. Um, but a couple things, just I'll give my sort of impression of what I see on the article drop, and then uh, Joe, you can go. Um, so first off, and kind of reading the text, four command cards. So that's kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we see three that I presume are Cassians, um, and then we got one flipped over. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm speculating that that one probably like. What are you going to do? Like two one pips and choose for Cassian, or is this going to be a, a, like? I'm assuming it's K two has a. Yeah, I would. That's a. I think that's a fair speculation. You know, I mean, would make sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how these two models function. Yes. Um, are, what are does they, that mean? Right. Are they the same as C three PO and R two D two where? Essentially, K2 is like an upgrade for Cassian, like the counterpart keyword, or what What are we going to see? Because you can't... Clearly, K2 has a card, but it's covered. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, that's interesting. And, like, how do you take that card in your seven is, like, what I'm kind of, like, you know, like, does it replace, you know, if it's a one, two, three pip, does it, like, does it um, replace one of the generics or one of your other command cards like how does that how does that all kind of work so yeah john's pointing out that it's not speculation says it in the article fair enough fair assumption that it's uh oh, okay fair you enough. know that it's that it's in there it's just how does it play that's that's kind of you know at the at the root of this whole speculation thing is how does it play so that right. was one thing i was looking at um i'm looking at um we can't see uh, K2's health, but I'm going to assume that it's more than three based on the fact that you get two three wound markers. They're not going to give you six for Cassian because he's dead at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that we can assume. But perhaps maybe he's, you know, if you total up the health that you see, and I'm not sure if that always translates, but there's nine there. 
Right. But I don't think that's the total health because unless it's four for him potentially. So yeah, he, I don't know. I he don't seems know. weaker. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Just, just, you know, looking at there and then also what's driving me a little bit insane here is we have three large size tokens. Right. And then we have one small, uh, operative token. Right. But we're only seeing two operatives. So unless they just gave you redundant copies of operatives, <laughs> his card shows a command, um, icon so mm-hmm. let's just assume that he's got one operative one command who's the third one for let's assume it's k2 right why does he have his own command token if that's the case that rules out your yeah. previous assumption right. that it's that's, that's that where it's... i'm like this is really strange it could be completely different it's pretty cool um i don't mm-hmm. know I, I i don't know what we're gonna get but it looks okay. like they're both like it's like k2 is like kind of expensive right he's like 70 points yeah 70 points there uh ben's just asking here correct me if i'm wrong but isn't the counterpart card formatted differently than k2's little silver oh oh, little silver of the card we can see yeah probably yeah i think that is true so there yeah that's another good point so is he a separate activation like you're just getting two separate activations in the in the in the box like i don't know well i mean the third command token would would indicate to me that yes um mm-hmm. but maybe you'd, yeah what is he? yeah that's <laughs> like yeah. um I, yeah I exactly i'm i'm also i'm also looking at the covert ops thing here cuz this is really interesting to me and i'm hoping we can get uh like an rrg update soon that explains what this actually means yep so squinting here uh i think it says when you deploy you may choose your rank to i I think you could like change your rank to operative and you gain infiltrate Mm -hmm. what does that mean when it comes to like list building though like when you build a list, are you a commander until you deploy and then you swap out the token? Can you have three operatives? Can you have three commanders? Like, can I run Luke, Leia, and then operative Cassian? Or do I have to, like, call him a commander for the purposes of list building until I, like, decide to place him on the table? Or, or conversely, can you take two ops... Cassian right. as commander and then use covert ops to make him your third right um, and like have no commander or something or like you know and then it's like what are the benefits and the negatives I guess the benefits are you have three operative tokens in your bag the negatives is you have like no courage bubble I don't really understand I'm curious how that's going to function mm-hmm. you know it's like what, what does this all mean um, but it's interesting for sure um, I hope it just means that you can take like three commanders and then just always call Cassian an operative or something. Yeah, the rebels I... needed more commander options, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But Fair it enough. looks like yeah. I mean, he's got a pretty standard range two, like red two, white Pierce one. That's pretty awesome. I love the combination of tactical and marksman. Yep, that is so. Good. It's like. He's moving and he's getting a free aim, and then when he's shooting, he's changing results. Yeah, and does it's, it say? Is it like? Is it any die result to any die result? It, it's hard to tell. I, it just says something about. I think it's. I don't know what that word is. After. I think it says you can upgrade die results. Is that? Maybe you can improve. Spend aim Is it improve? To improve attack. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I don't know what improve results mean. Like, does that mean I change a hit to a crit, or does that mean I change a blank to a crit? Hmm. I, and then, <laughs> and then he's, you know, he seems a little weak. He surged to hit. He's white defense dice. Like, he's, sur- he's surged to hit, but he's got marksman. So does that mean that it's really like surge to crit because you move and get a free aim? And I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, he's only changing one die result. So, mm-hmm. like, what I, can you surge but, to hit and then marksman the hit to a crit? 
I don't know, but I do know that he has a sniper rifle that has infinite range and not range five, and it's red black. Oh yeah, I see that now. So it's like yeah, it's, it's is it cumbersome though? Is that what it says? It's cumbersome, which yeah. means like you're not going to be able to reposition, get the free aim, and still shoot it. But yeah. you could probably park him in place and aim shoot across the table like snipers used to be able to do. Mm-hmm. And it's got high velocity, it's got pierce, but it's got what is it? Reconfigure. So it flips over and it's got something else, which is indicative of like that scene in the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like literally yeah. it he reconfigures the weapon there. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. So I'm guessing that'll be more of like a short range, maybe a little more powerful weapon or something um i think it's really cool too i was i was having a look at the um, the model online and um the uh, oops that's not what we wanted to do hello hello sorry folks i just messed up what's happening here Oh, whatever we did. I'll just leave it like that now. Now we have a gray background. <laughs> Not exactly sure what I... I clicked on the wrong button, clearly. Um, we'll just leave it like that. Um, but um, the the model for K2, I was thinking, uh, like, the render looks, oh, it's kind of plain and, and bland. But then I got thinking about, you know, it's actually a really nice palette for people to work off of. So I think we're going to see a lot of really cool K2 style robots right so um again all these all these models now that potentially aren't using in your army i guess if you clearly distinguish this they all potentially become nice hostages if you if you have to play that other scenario so that's kind of cool that's cool um the other thing that they do definitely mention in the article that i remember seeing is like this is coming on hard plastic right so these guys are coming on sprues so just like anything else on sprues, there's probably a little bit of extra customization there when it comes to poses and stuff. Right. So that's that's neat. Yeah. There um, we go, folks. I fixed our screen there. So um, oh, okay. let's let's uh, let's bring up the one other thing that we can actually see here, and it's the the one pip, and this is no squinting required, um, entitled uh, Crack Shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, really cool art on this one, by the way. It says Cassian Andor gain. It's a Cassian Andor only. Cassian Andor gains Gunslinger and one aim token. So awesome. Right. And at the end of his activation, he may gain one suppression token and he gains one standby token. So you have an option for this for the suppression. Mm. Um, and I, which I, you want because you have Danger Sense three. Right. And then You're you gain gonna... this. And then you gain the standby, which yep. is really good um we don't know what all the weapons do so there's another weapon underneath that sniper rifle that we can't quite see what that one does um but the mere fact that he has pierce and it looks like the other one has pierce as well so you know taking a shot so potentially you're moving getting an aim taking a shot you have gunslinger so you're able to take another shot to that turn Mm -hmm. get an aim token yep (laughs) Uh, so you got multiple aims. Um, you have marksmen on board. End of the turn, get a suppression, more defensive, go into standby. And I yeah. believe that gunslinger should still apply to you um, for the turn. Ah, uh, I think so. I I don't. I mean, you're gaining a keyword. Right, for a turn, right? You get, I, Usually, yeah, I'm trying to think of other examples where that's the case. Um, well, what about with Jin's cards? Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think you just... Because you get, like, teamwork, right? That turn right. that you gain teamwork? You have so outside of your activation, right. the other, the unit you teamwork yeah. with, right? Mm-hmm. So potentially, and so it doesn't, it says you have Gunslinger. So do you have Gunslinger on your first attack for two and then go into the standby and then potentially have another two? That sounds right. I think that makes sense and sounds correct. If Can that's you the actually case, that's really Gunslinger strong. your sniper rifle that turn? Uh, I don't see why not as long as you don't move. Right. It doesn't exhaust or anything. It's cumbersome. So it's like, okay, you get a free aim. You can take an aim action first and then shoot two targets and then get exactly. a stand on the expression. Exactly. 
Or if you're if you're maybe like in the other config, like you flip that card over, maybe you move Han Solo style, the the move gunslinger. Move, yeah. but this time you're getting essentially two aims when you move. You're split firing into two different targets, and then you're standing by in that close range. Yeah. That's that's interesting. You know, it's that's gonna that's a really strong one pip. Mm. You can see that potentially having a lot of uh, pretty cool uses. Yeah, I mean, if if in fact it is um, it is um, applicable to the turn, um, mm. I can actually see this one pip potentially having first turn implications. You play this, you're able to maybe catch snipers uh, who haven't positioned, or you're like looking to put two wounds on multiple targets. Maybe you know. Um, yeah. And does that does that weapon have high velocity? It does. It does. Just yeah. saying, this is maybe a way that you put a couple, maybe a couple wounds into Tauntauns early. Yeah. From across sure. the table, right? For sure. And it's it's rough because like burning a one pip on turn one is always like risky and. Except, you know, except one for pip, maybe one, one pips are there to save you. Yeah. True. True. Um, I'm just thinking that a uh, high velocity pierce weapon that you can shoot early um, with multiple aims. Mm -hmm. y you may have, you just may have that reason that you want to, you know, just plunk oh, yeah. those early wounds on on anything. Like I said, catching snipers yeah. out in the open, or if your opponent's going to kind of go for, a, you know, um, I'm winning the sniper war because I have three and you have none. Boom, here's Cassian's card. But you know, I also shoot you at infinite range, and you shoot me at range five. So exactly. I probably just win that sniper war. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's good, and it's it's really strong dice because it's red black with surge. Red black like, with surge with pierce, and you're going to have likely have an aim, or I guess you'll have a one aim. But it, yeah, I guess you you seeing, could take the I'm not aim action. A sharpshooter though. That's that's where it's like. Uh, yeah, true, true. But yeah. again, again, we're we're not playing in that world of infinite range anymore. Mm -hmm. If you're outside of that range four or five bubble to start, how worried might your opponent be? Like if if your opponent's not really thinking about you know the Cassian one pip being a early turn play or something like that. Like I, you know, you put your position, you put your snipers out in positions that I'm okay. I'm going to make the double first, the double move first turn to get to those spots. So maybe yeah. don't worry about putting them in heavy cover. I was just know. thinking, well, I was just thinking too, I'm like, okay, I, I just said that they don't have sharpshooter, but what if Marksman just lets you change hits to crits? Well, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. And, and it, plus it's improve, and it's improve. Yeah. So yeah, you're that right. That you just need to get hits and then you spend that aim and you just get free crits, then mm -hmm. certainly it doesn't even matter. <laughs> yep. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, jeez. Well, looks hey. Like, looks like there's something with the word gin, and it has a weapon. Oh, what, okay. Which, what would you speculate that is? Maybe Jin's the, the pistol she throws to K2, or... Oh, yeah, I Jin see ever... that. Or maybe Jin's just able to take this weapon. Oh. Maybe it's, maybe it's going to say Jin Urso slash K2SO. Okay. Okay. If that's like a soft upgrade to Jin, that's even cooler. Because I mean, he like I mean, Jin, you know, gets it says gun. Jin on the car. Like you can see the word Jin, right? Or maybe what it has is Jin or so slash Cassian because he gives her a weapon, right? Yeah. Well, I know for sure she hands a weapon to K two. K two, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but that's cool. Yeah, that I'm just Jin, again. Jin's getting something in this pack. I'm I'm loving it. It's we're we're getting Rogue One stuff. We wanted you, it. We got okay. you know we got Jin and Pathfinders. We wanted to flesh that out. One hundred percent speculation here. Yep. K two S O teamwork Jin or so. Or teamwork Cassian. Could yeah. I'm just I'm you just know, I'm trying to I'm trying to play off that card now. Yeah, that'd be that'd be insane. Or maybe his command cards just he gets teamwork. Yeah, fair. <laughs> or so, who knows. <laughs> All I know is I like running themed armies, and I'm going to find a way to make Jin, Cassian, and K2 go on the field when they come out together. All right. Even, um, you know, 
yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay, we're one hour in. We still got we still got Aiden and we still got rules of engagement. So we better we Let's we jump, literally jump could be at this. We could literally be at this all night. So keep uh, chat. Keep your speculations going uh, too, for sure. Yeah. Um, let me go here. Uh, okay, switching over to Aiden. Aiden Versio and ID Ten. Um, same sort of deal. Just got the uh, the layout splash here. Immediate reactions. What are you seeing, Joe? Not keywords, um, but what do you see in this driving you uh, to uh, to think some thoughts here? Well, I see a shield. Right? Yeah, there's a, there's a shield. <laughs> there's a shield token. I don't know the uh, robot. Is that is that seem like something the robot might I, have? Like I, I honestly can't even remember because it's been over a year since I played through that campaign. I don't remember if like at some point she has shield. Maybe. maybe the maybe the bot can take a just take a eat a hit like almost yeah. like a guardian maybe yeah that would that would I could see that I don't know that's cool though and then uh, definitely definitely the card though is different so we're not seeing the we're not seeing the same I'm just looking at the left edge there we're not seeing the same card layout so this one here definitely looks like some sort of companion. Looks like a Exactly. That looks exactly. Like counterpart. That's actually a great mention from whoever said that earlier. Ben, that was chat. that was Ben. Yep. Yeah, Ben. Nice catch, because that's a hundred percent a counterpart card. So that makes sense too, because I mean that's exactly what the droid is to to Aiden is a counterpart. Like basically, he folds up and sits on her back like a backpack. Right. And and then she sends him out, and he's like, oh, she's like, go hack that. Go hack that terminal. Go like scout out ahead. Go do this or that. Uh, throw me some like uh, back to stims or something, and he heals her. And you can like build his loadout different ways or whatever. Use him for different utility. But he's a hundred percent like not shooting or like participating in combat like as a separate. He's just kind of like a little utility for her. So that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it I... looks like he only has one health. Yeah, and I'll, well, here's the thing: is it is it maybe like one health because there's one shield, and maybe yeah, the maybe. shields maybe the shields got a regen ability too. Yeah, and you, you remember um, with counterpart, it's like oh, you allocate wounds however you want. Mm, yeah. Right. So and maybe Iden's... like maybe that's just one extra health to Iden on the turn that she's supposed to die. Yeah, or and Aiden seems know, pretty tanky at, I mean, standard Imperial, but six health yeah, is, yeah. you know, one one above what we typically will see, and then the red dice, of course. She's, she's Dooku. She's literally, actually, well, Dooku serves to crit, but yeah. six health, three courage, red save. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Um, I'll tell you right now, I will be modeling my robot with a much slimmer uh, profile peg, because that, yes. to me, just looks... I mean, Terrible. I get it. It's it's a standardized flight base. It's just too bulky for me. I completely agree. I thought that too, and I, I'm like, the thing's as wide as the model. Mm -hmm. like, what is this thing? Yeah, just yeah. just a piece of brass rod brass that you rod, can paint black. Yeah, exactly. Good call. Yep. I'll do the same thing. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and you but, know what? I might you you could do if you wanted to make your base a little more decorative. Maybe you make it a little bit more industrial, and then you yeah. have some maybe even like a pipe or something, you know, coming off another piece that just makes it look yeah. the part a little bit better. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so she's got quick thinking. Yep, that's like uh, that. I think Jin had that, so that's yes. cool. Yeah, and we got ops again, so we got that same ability that we're not quite sure on, but. Oh, and you know what? She's got loadout, which is the same thing uh, Cassian had, but I don't think we really talked about it. No, and I think you can read this one fairly decent. When you deploy, you may swap any of your equipped upgrades with your... Set-aside upgrades? Yep. So, just speculating, I'm guessing that means, like, you can build her multiple ways or something, and then... When you deploy, you're like, I'm gonna take this loadout, right? This is this. This might be, and I don't. I, again, I don't really know until we see an RRG entry. But this might be that like sideboard mechanic that people have been asking for. 
Um, yeah. I know it's been brought up in relation to command cards, and it sounds like this says upgrades. But if that means like, oh, she can have different upgrade, like different versions of her build or something, and you make the choice when you deploy in like a tournament setting, yep. that's interesting. Because that means she's way more flexible. Let me. I just want to see one thing real quick. I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip back. I'm looking at the weapons here. So I'm seeing dots on next to both of Aiden's weapons, indicating that only Aiden can have these, or I would, I would presume, because they look right, like they actually right. say. Let me they just say go back. Aiden's whatever. Yeah. Let me go back yeah. to Cassian's here. Okay. So his. Okay, his thing says Cassian Andor only, and then the other one is a is a dot. And then just says Jin. So it's like if there's a dot in, you can only take one, and it starts with Jin. So it really can't have a Jin slash someone else, you wouldn't think. Or no, it can. It just means I, you can only have I guess, one yeah, you can only take one. one. Yeah. Right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Just I just want to go back and have a look at that. Just have me thinking. Mm hmm. Okay, um, and then we cool. got Marksman, and then Nimble. I, I also like the looks of her weapon here, so very much seems like a similar configuration here to what uh, Cassian had, but I was looking at that second weapon there. I don't know the range on it, but it looks to me like it has both critical and impact. Ooh, nice. Maybe a grenade launcher or something. So as we're talking about a surge potentially to crit, obviously, um, and then you got impact, which is going to be... So, I mean, we don't know what the crit value is there, but... So if you rolled multiple surges, you could effectively uh, end up with multiple crits. One yeah, you convert cool. with critical, and then one you after cover and dodge, of course. But you could potentially impact. So maybe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe an anti another another anti vehicle source. I feel bad because I, like I said, I haven't played through this campaign since the game came out, and it came out like I think last Christmas. Um, so I don't really remember the specifics on the weapons she can take, but I know she can take like a, a range of weapons. So FFG usually does a good job, and I think they show um, in the article a sculpt with her holding a different weapon than the one that's shown in this colored picture. Oh. So it's it's just one of her cannon weapons. I mean, we don't even really need to speculate. Just go play the game. I don't know if it's like a T20 or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But this, I wonder, yeah. I mean, here's the thing, too. If you really want to get speculative, you could just look at, like, it, it, there's, there's like, a trend here in the releases. It's like uh, you had the tank come out, and then it had a gunner that can take the RTC-17 or whatever. And then they released a stormtrooper that can carry it. And then they released, like, a do-back that can shoot it. And a lot of those weapons overlap. There's only like a finite number of like imperial canonical weapons. So I'm sure you can probably speculate or guess as to what that is. If you play the game and compare it to what's already in the game and what the weapons are and stuff. I don't know what that is, but it's, you know, we the, the internet might be a little sleuthy and able to figure it out. Yep. So yeah, for sure, it's definitely Aiden's something, and then the other one is Aiden's yeah, DLT, Iden's slightly fancier canonical yeah. stormtrooper gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well let's uh, let's pop up this because we got this one too. Uh, pulse scan, Aiden Versio. Yep. Perfect. One pip again. Yep. Uh, Aiden Versio only. Aiden Versio gains sharpshooter two, <laughs> and one aim token. At the end of her activation, she gains one dodge token and one standby token. So the same kind of thing again mm -hmm. with, the, but, with the I can attack and then I can take a standby after. Yes. Which I like. I like that a lot. Yeah, except we're looking at a high velocity sniper rifle here, infinite range with Pierce 1 and Sharpshooter 2. Yep, and Surge. And Surge. Uh, and to... a bunch, and probably two aims. Yep. And well, marksman. marksman, exactly. It's, it's not like, not cumbersome. So. I'm just gonna, you know, because well, I think okay, if marksman works how I'm speculating it works, if I can change hits to crits, that just means that this is super anti vehicle too. It's basically free impact without having impact. Mm -hmm. Right, like it's like yeah. I'm just gonna dice fix into a crit and pierce you. Yeah, and, and it's, it's definitely like, is that a pierce one? Looks like a yeah, one to me. Pierce one, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And but but then the blaster rifles on there too, and that looks like a one to three. Maybe yeah. So yeah, I'm not saying that oh, you. Oh oh yeah, like her yeah her on card three white gun. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if she, I wonder if like I don't know. I wonder if she'll get arsenal or something, uh, like out of a command card, because yeah. she has the ability to take so many weapons. It looks like, it's yeah. like they're showing at least three. So mm, yes, yes, because it's like uh, the two you could pay points for, and then her her baseline weapon. So James Harton had a he had a comment here. So I'm just going to put it up just just because I'm un, I'm unsure what you mean by this, James. So he says snipers only have range five. So that no. is accurate. He, well, yes, it, but that no. is accurate for snipers. But at, we're thinking, and it looks pretty much like the sniper rifles on both Cassian and Aiden have in fact infinite range, like the right. old sniper. Um, Re- remember, so, it wasn't okay. Re- just remember. Snipers have range five due to an errata that is specific to the two snipers. Right. So this is a new model coming out being printed with a card that says that it has infinite range. Yeah. The 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 errata wasn't infinite range now means five. The errata was the two snipers. sniper strike teams specifically go down to range five. Yeah. So I'm thinking that these are a hundred percent not gonna be errata, that they're gonna have infinite range. And I think that's okay because they're not 44 points like they used to be. They're We're also not seeing them spammed. And, we're not we're also right. not seeing them spammed in, in groups of right. three. So right. we're talking about one infinite. I mean, we still have that. Leia's Bombard. We have maximum firepower. We, yep. have, we already have a few of those infinite range things. Um, yep. I mean, it could be said that Leia's Bombard's almost like three sniper shots. Yeah, um, it is. In a way, yeah, yeah, I agree with yeah. That. but um, but yes, I I believe that with the new cards coming out, I mean, there was definitely enough time between the errata and and likely printing this. You would hope um, that if there was a fix, it would have just been a straight five put on there if if that was meant to be. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I'm not sure your comment exactly, James. So hopefully that sort of uh, clarifies that. But if not, please please let us know down in the chat. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so anything on here again, we're seeing that mini token, which I have no idea like that to yeah. me is complete. I, I don't know the relevance of that. I'm at first I thought, oh, okay, it's just, it, they've just sort of shrunk down this, but then I like realized like, no, they wouldn't have that next to actual other sized tokens if it yeah, wasn't. It just, it just looks like it's going to be, if, if I can guess, I mean, maybe I, I have no idea until we see the RRG, but it looks like it's just going to be one of those useless tokens like the commander token where it's there just to represent some sort of like board state or something. I, I think it must have something to do with the fact that when you go from, because the, the card is printed default, Aiden and Cassian are commanders. Oh, yeah, like you put that over the card or something. Or, like... or just, just to say like, no, in fact, this game, here's the reminder that my Aiden is playing as operative. Right. not as commander which i understand and respect the fact that they added a token for that but it doesn't seem necessary right i think it's just uh, maybe to, I, but cause... again there's different levels of player skill and understanding and also like if your opponent looks at just your cards and they have no idea what this character is or does then you know that little token helps clarify i guess I, 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 well, I mean, the same thing could be said for the reason we're doing exhaustible tokens for for yeah. other things, right? It's a visual right. indicator as a reminder because you can have that conversation and then later on forget. And instead of yeah. maybe having to ask or discuss that again, it's like that visual cue to you as an opponent. Oh, yeah, I, now I remember what's, what's happening here. Or I remember yeah. what pre-game decision because I'm guessing that covert ops needs to be made like it. I don't know. So oh, yes. Yeah, the, no, it does. It does. Yeah, never mind. I yeah, so that's, yeah, so that, it does. That's where I get back to my confusion on how does this affect list building, and I'm excited to see how they rule it. Yeah. You know, because it's like if you're making the decision on deployment, but you need to have your list presented to your opponent like before deployment. But maybe it's a situation just very similar to like Entourage, where you can kind of break list building rules because mm-hmm. you have somebody who says you can. Right, which so, is cool. It's great. Yeah. 
I'll just yeah. wait for Tabletop Admiral to come out and tell me what I can and can't take in my lists. <laughs> <laughs> do, the, do the work for us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I can't be mathing all the time. So, <laughs> no, that's okay. Cool. So, what do we feel? We, I, I feel like we, I mean, we've speculated the heck out of these things. We're probably. Any, anyone else probably, have any questions or comments or anything that they want to throw out before we move on, really? I mean, we can we can always cycle back too. So I mean, I know you guys are a few seconds leg on us. So, right. um, okay. But yeah, I think I, I mean, we're hey, let's we'll come back and look at this in you know several months when this drops. Oh, sure, we're gonna and, get a full spoiler article. We're gonna get the release. I think yeah. they did. Didn't they say something about like quarter one though? So this is like yeah, March. I'm guessing March. March. Right, this could. You know what? I'm calling it now. Early, early pre-release at Adepticon. Adepticon, yeah, fair enough. Calling it out. This okay. is going to be the thing everyone lines up for. Legal only for tournament team play. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Get it. Get it to a three-color minimum. Oh my god! Last year was hilarious, dude. <laughs> when uh, we had a, like local guys like go to the Badger booth and pay the guy in the booth to to airbrush their land speeders real quick so they could play it <laughs> in tournament. Awesome. <laughs> It was awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah we, we could cool. probably so, probably find some people walking around that. Hey, hey, I need this painted up. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. Aiden looks like she has oh, two colors. You know, so you no know people are gonna walk out into the parking lot with a cardboard box, hit her with a base coat, uh, uh, spray rattle can of black. Yep. Paint some red marks on her helmet and be like, she's done. Done. Yep. <laughs> she's legal. Make it yep. so. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, no, that that looks cool. I, I the art on that one pip is also really cool. Pulse scan, yes. and I kind of see like it looks like she's like looking through a tree and kind of sees like a heat signature there. And oh then, yeah, you got the that's Dio just straight up being like, "What's everything?" And you know that's what he does. You know, gives you a little, get, lets you see through walls and stuff. Okay, so or, I might be. So I guess I've been saying ID ten, but is that yeah, ID? ID10, I think, I don't know, did I say Dio? Isn't that like her nickname for it or something? Uh, or maybe I, I'm wrong. I don't, it's all blending <laughs> together. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's all it's all about speculation here. We don't usually yeah. do speculation either. However, um, it's early in the week. Nobody's kind of talked about this. We, we kind of got some fresh content to talk about. Also, it's kind of like almost not fresh content, but it's almost like uh, we're revisiting something that we thought was coming out a while ago. So, right. I mean, we might as well hit it up. All right, so let's, uh, in the interest of time, let's grab our last few uh, few topics here. So we're going to go to the rules of engagement, the vital assets. Um, Battlefield expansion, again, we saw this pick already there, so I won't spend too much time um, on this one here. But um, we got a number of things to kind of uh, look at. So we've talked about the hostage potential. Um, <laughs> And then uh, I'll just bring this up for here's, you for interest. Here's what I'll say: Everyone, dig out those barricades and start painting them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must be referring to fortified positions. If yeah. I had, I finally have a reason to paint up all my extra barricades, right? I could do them in different colors and themes. Do barricades need a three-color minimum? Ooh, yes. Hot gonna, take. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, this just in. It's part Somebody of your walks. Building, I guess, like, right? You build your battle deck and you carry it around with you, and it's part of it's part of like the required component. My question is, who do you have to? Does every player have to carry around eight barricades with them? Do Better. you have to only carry around four barricades because it says each takes turns, or do you have to supply the barricades for the table? If you're blue player, that's a really good question. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know how they're going to rule that. I don't care what the rule is, but if I play you, Joe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graciously lend you um, four of my two color barricades. Okay. And I'm going to use three color barricades, and then and I'm going to call the judge on you <laughs> immediately. Have your barricades removed after you've conveniently deployed your units behind them, and then proceed to I table will you. I will these off the table. I will take these off the table. Yes, they're I... offensive, illegal. Yes, uh, I'll just paint. I'll just paint like just like nasty sayings on yours, like you know, real 
real Canadian slurish sayings, and then I'll proceed to be offended by that. Oh. And then to have... <laughs> yes. We got a Canadian racist up there, man. You need to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> you'll 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 insult our uh, gi rages and uh, you know our ski doos. <laughs> awesome. Oh man. Well, okay. we well, we just <laughs> we dumpstered that one. There now we go. That we completely went into the trash. Fair enough. Let's keep looking at uh, the vital assets. I hey, I, I've been excited for any new conditions and deployments and objectives for a long time. They said they were going to do it. We've just been waiting on it. Uh, the models look awesome. Actually, those carts, I've 3D printed those. Um, that model's been out forever. And I 3D printed those a long time ago and, and put like supply crates on it. And we use those in the store. So it's kind of nice to see those getting an official release and like some sort of condition or objective or something tied to it. That's pretty neat. Uh, again, just, just looking at, at the models as is, and maybe the renders are, are a little bit um, misleading, but... The overhang on those carts to me is going to be slightly problematic. Oh, I can't for wait the for all the tryhards on TTS to be talking about that. <laughs> for, um, for, not, for the move. Where, where is technically the definition of base contact? Do I have to fit my model under this cart? <laughs> I can't. Yes. By the way, I love how every every person Joe ever encounters has the same voice. <laughs> Uh, doesn't matter if he's talking about a drive through story, a Walmart person, like me. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. We all sound the same. It's just the it's... general voice of the tryhard on the internet. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you acknowledge my efforts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's have a look at these uh, largely uh, blown up cards that we don't have to really squint, but we do have to do a lot of, like, uh, truncated uh, or incomplete sentence reading here. Yeah. Um, so we got some, looks like we have definitely some exhaustible conditions, or I'm, I'm sorry, that's there, not the proper term, supply. Those, yeah, those supply. supplies yeah. that you can pick up. Yeah, so, so while defending against the range attack during the applied dodge and cover step, gain one dodge token, who gets to tap it? Uh, I think, no, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming, no, I'm assuming the supplies are like, because it's a, a random deck, you're going to just like gain that card and be able to use it whenever you want I'm, i wonder if like each person draws each turn there's 16 yeah so i mean or maybe it's maybe you alternate it's or yeah i don't know i don't know or unless you have to move your you have to move into base contact with it and then you oh can, maybe like, yeah or something oh that's right. that's maybe yeah that's that's yeah. true maybe you do maybe you loot and get and then that. you just randomly draw out of the deck and see what you get oh i got field scanner cool i get a free dodge when i want it you know or i oh i got a back to capsule awesome I'm, I'm gonna get a free like bring back a model treat one mm. That so seems that, very good. That's what I'm saying, right? Like that. Who knows what those other fourteen are? There could be some crazy stuff in there. Yeah. Like, well, there's there looks. I mean, we see three there. No, actually, we see hostage back to field, and then down here it looks like we know five well, of them because then grab. Hostage is not part. Oh, whoops! Yeah, that isn't no. And the yeah. hostage is the condition that from it's the condition. The, it's an objective. It's but then objective. we have the target yeah. targeting range. Or targeting something range, and then uh, grappling harpoon. Oh, doesn't it say? Yeah, you get like grappling hooks or scale. Okay, or uh, so Jeff is pointing out here. He thinks that somewhere it says uh, draw to keep one or something like that. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. Yep. So potentially that's yeah. That's that makes it. so sense. out of the sixteen. Each, I wonder if each person. Draws, or maybe every time you touch, you draw. I don't. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, either enough. way, it sounds like you're going to be getting some stuff that you can use over the course of the game. That's going to be random mm -hmm. and help you, and that's yep. that's interesting because that's that means that like every game is going to feel a little different. Yeah. You know. So. Um, so in addition to those, we also have the ability to see. Uh, let me bring these up here. That's not what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. So this is two condition cards. 
Oh, there's one. your supply drop. Oh, yeah, right there. I guess we can look yeah. right here. So, so it's a condition. Something it's, it's, it's the equivalent of rapid reinforcements or limited visibility. It's just... Starting with the blue player, condition tokens face down on the battlefield until six something something placed. Each token must be beyond range one, blank, 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 and beyond range one of other conditions. And then I'm going to guess that's troop er. I can see an ER sticking yeah, out there. Got, Units gain, be. resupply, choose a condition token in, I'm going to guess base contact with the unit leader, and flip it face up if able. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can run out of cards. Otherwise, remove something, something cards. Equip one and shuffle one into the supply deck. Yeah, so there's a separate deck that probably sits on the side of the board. Mm -hmm. And you're making base contact with these objectives, and then you can loot them. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's not an objective, it's just a condition. So it's yeah. rapid reinforcements, it's limited visibility, it's just... Here's another condition that I can throw in the mix. You got a bunch of ways that you could randomly just get upgrades that yeah. you and your opponent could just go like divert their attention to and see what you get. Or you're playing a game where where maybe this is like you don't really feel it's a huge benefit to your army, but maybe a distraction to your opponent, or maybe it's a situation where you just don't want to take it because you don't want to risk any advent like any advantages to your opponent. Yeah, and when you really have the deck memorized, if there's any, like, duplicates or something, you know, you'll you know, like, oh, they already looted that awesome card, mm -hmm. like, I don't even care, or whatever, yeah. you know, they're, they're, yeah, there's, like, a bunch of different layers to it. Yep. And I've seen this mechanic done um, in Arena Rex, where they're, like... They, it's it's just like a house rule thing they do where in the arena they put like little chests around that you could go bash open and get little benefits from. Right. And it's cool because people like – I've seen all different kinds of crazy things happen where people are like, let's make a gentleman's agreement. I'll grab this chest. You grab that chest. Or there will be like fights that break out over a chest. <laughs> Yep. You know, and like th th I could totally see that same kind of stuff happening in here, and it's awesome. You know, it's who knows how that's going to play out. And there could be some funny stuff, or it's like I'm going to put my two on this side of the board, you put your couple on that side of the board. We'll just both grab them, see what we I, get. Uh, you know? I, I just was uh, briefly going to mention the two art on these uh, cards, so we can't see all the blue. But I'm hoping that they aren't, because I think you mentioned earlier that you thought maybe they all look like kind of buffs. Judging on that one there where I see four droids opening up a crate, I really hope that there's a couple like, hmm, you, you gain detonate one, detonates immediately. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the thing is, you have to make a choice between two. So you would probably just put that back in the deck, but that's interesting because. But like, maybe, like, but maybe that one simply just has. Blows up in your face. <laughs> right, but maybe yeah. that one, maybe that one has a like a counts as two, or this card cannot be discarded. Yeah, like, no, you know that would those would yeah. be those would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, just based on the art alone, and now I wanna. I hope this this comes out so I can make even more battle droids do funny things. So. Um, and then the other one, I love fortify positions. I just love how they have double stack the barricades. Has <laughs> no one, no one's ever deployed them like that. I've never seen it, but uh, but I definitely like how they've they've chosen to kind of double stack. And I mean, well, if you honestly think is, about you that, can, you yeah, can, piggyback it's to build a, a line of sight blocking wall. Yes, illegal. why not? Oh, it's illegal. Oh, it's I, a double stack. I, uh, yeah, no, double, I mean, sorry, I mean uh, deploy in depth, I guess, here. But however, if you think about this, if you were to keep a unit leader on the outside and you were to line up and sort of um, progressively build just just that defensive wall to the middle objective or something like that, it's like, oh, speed two between this one, speed two between this one, speed mm -hmm. two, like, I mean. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like weave in and out of you're just constantly in heavy cover. yeah. To me, I swear this feels like the this, the most annoying object or condition. Mm. Like it's to me, this is a hard veto. Like every time, because I'm like, man, a game where you're always in heavy cover is not fun, and also a game where you have to it's like it's just you could have such a dense, ridiculously cluttered board if you're going to add eight barricades to an existing board. 
I wonder if that changes table design logic. Um, like where they're like, maybe let's put less pieces of scatter so that if someone takes this card, it makes the table more interesting. It's just a weird choice to me. I mean, could I you, know. could you in this deployment, if you were looking to slow down um, your opponent, could you throw a barricade in between places where they couldn't necessarily, yes. you know what I mean? So yeah. so then you could kind of create some sort of challenges for your opponent, I guess. Yeah. I, I yeah. think what's going to happen with this, but though... you're also giving them cover, like, everywhere. It, yeah, you, so you are. Like, except for yeah. if you have a list... Like, I'm just thinking about, like, you know, a list that maybe covers not the end of the world because they're either... Maybe you're running you're flamers flame. or... Well, or yeah. flamers, for that yeah. matter. Or maybe you're running vehicles and it's just like, you know... it. it you know, I have, I have height, so barricade's not going to be enough to give you, like, an ATST or something like that. Right, and right. So um, I I think that this is going to be um, one of those things where this might become a deployment that just takes that extra time to... Not a deployment, rather, but a, a condition. This is going to take one of the... It's going to add... Let's just say, for example, you couple this with advanced positions, so mm -hmm. now you have a deployment that takes a little extra because of scout, and now you have a condition that requires you to spend a little extra time deploying fortified positions. And then maybe you're also playing, I don't know, uh, maybe you're playing um, recover the supplies. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, because that would, that would, yeah, that's in the blue. Um, so now you have a really lengthy... And then maybe you're both playing 13 activation lists. So, right. So, well, so now, I, you, I, now you have I, a 45-minute turn zero. Yeah. What is this, TTS? <laughs> 45 minutes? All right. Well, I, I think, um, I don't know. I can see this being super good for specific lists, right? Yeah. If yeah. you're playing a gun line, you're, like, loving four or five positions, right? Absolutely. You're like, oh, cool. I'm just going to put them all in my, like, right outside my deployment zone. And my gun line is just always in heavy cover. And I love it. Um, if you're playing that, like, eight activation list, uh, it, it's maybe a better choice than, like, rapid reinforcements or, like, minefield. You know? So it's like, uh, maybe you take it. I don't know. Um, I, I mean, you know, could you get. I mean, what if you're playing a list that you really don't want the barricades? So then you end up basically just throwing your barricades along the back edge of your board. Yeah, I you could guess. Do that. Well, I guess if you really wanted to be clever, if you were ever worried about um, um, running off the table, you know, late game or something like that. Like I literally had a game where I just like had two units within range two, but like barely walking off. You could throw the barricades along those corners of those back edges. And if That's your most direct route would be off the table, you would now have to technically slow down and you could yeah. potentially save. That's so save. Like corner case, but awesome. I know. That's a great that's a great piece of tech there. Yeah, I'm Man, just you're well, I'm just, something. I'm just like I'm just like, okay, I got I got vehicles. I don't want these in my way. I don't want right. them, I don't want them right. to create a situation where my opponent can use them at all. I'll just put these back in the corner, line them shoulder to shoulder, and you know what? I'm gonna put a couple you know, snipers or something back here, or I'm going to put a back capping, you know, naked trooper unit. And if you happen to like throw a, you know, Palpatine, throw some suppression on, cause they're not going to be able to shoot. And then you hit me with a, a Krennic, uh, you know, an annihilation looms. If you're happen to run those two together or whatever, anyway, they dump a bunch of suppression. If a unit wouldn't exit the board immediately, then that might yeah, that'd no, be hilarious if that happened. Cool. But I'm just thinking, thought. how do you get them out of the way? Because I was just looking. I, the reason I brought that up is that it's not a may place. Right. It's a must. Right. right. And so where do I put these that I'm going to make sure that nobody's going to use them, especially my opponent? Well, I'll put them on my back edge of my table. So there's nothing yeah. that says I can't do. Well, actually, it does say here. When a player police, it must be placed. No, it's, so it's inside your deployment zone. So perfectly fine to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Weird, but cool. <laughs> um yeah paint your barricades i guess gotta have them yeah. ready now yeah um all right hostage exchange interesting yep so essentially you can't you know you pick a core unit your opponent picks a core unit and you both start with a hostage 
and you're basically trying to get the hostage it's, it looks like back to your deployment zone mm-hmm. so and then you get that hostage card that they show where it's like you can't be you can't like do anything on turn one like you can't be shot you can't be choked you can't be acted upon right yeah it's like uh, a mutant to like all all effects or something and like can't be attacked can't be engaged with yeah i'm just gonna hide that so we can see that yeah increase yeah increase your courage by one reduce your maximum speed by by one to a total of, to a minimum of one you can mm-hmm. start a melee during round one enemy units blank i'm gonna guess can't start a melee with you since you can't mm-hmm. fight either or attack right. you you gain immune enemy not sure what that word is there enemy something i'm pretty sure this card is isolated in the article where you can look at just it oh okay I maybe it can. says um, enemy effects or something oh yeah enemy effects that, that so is I'm correct now that, that, that like i have seen that yeah. powers and stuff yep. right yeah i wonder if it's all effects like can you what if annihilation looms played does that mean you can't uh, take um, you can't take suppression i'm guessing yeah and they i guess they have to define effects now mm. it's another thing we have to define but, <laughs> yeah. fair enough but yeah no i don't know that's a good one that's a Let's good quick question, break in the game tonight <laughs> yeah but no it's cool it's like um it seems like it's going to be really good for really specific lists like i think if you're playing something that naturally rolls red saves and then you can use aggressive tactics to give it surges like shore troopers or storm troopers um you know, you can you could possibly like really preserve and hold that hostage and just kind of run away and hide or something and just score. Whereas yeah. like droids, you know, they might just like drop their hostage and be more vulnerable. And there's going to be some I don't know. It seems like kind of a stalemate game, right? Like it seems like you're just both going to bring your hostage back to your deployment zone and then just kind of gun line at each other. But I don't know. I'd have to see it play out. It seems Fair. almost like. On paper, it reminds me of, like, Moisture Evaporators 2.0. Yeah. But... <laughs> Everybody gets early, and then it comes down to turn six, kill as much as you right, can. Right, yeah. and Or, like, see who you can make drop it in turn six or whatever. Yeah, right. or, like, MOB. I don't know, but that's that's just kind of, like, how I envision it without having played it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be... It's going to be interesting. Fair. But, okay. Uh, yep. I was going to say we're we're creeping over an hour and 30 minutes here so an exceptionally lengthy episode but we did have four articles so let's let's yeah. uh you know let's call it how it is. Yeah. Um do you want to move on to the last and, and most exciting one? If you're going to say paint, I feel like we don't even need to talk about it. I'm saying paint and here it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks great. I'll say this, I have the first ever set of like paint that I bought for this game was the like Army Painter 60 pack. Mm -hmm. And while I personally think, like, Vallejo and GW paint is better, um, I still think Army Painter paint's fine, and their washes are great. Yep. The only thing I I found with Army Painter, and this is, like, practical experience, because I've used this paint a lot, is that more so than the other brands, you just need to shake the crap out of it. Because Mm -hmm. they put this, like, solvent or something on the top, that if you don't shake and you squeeze it, it comes out as like a really thin purple liquid. Mm-hmm. And you just really need to shake those things a lot more than you would any other paint. That's I why actually, I didn't like them. But. I actually think it's the medium that actually separates out of their paint. Yeah, so some, it's weird. But um, yeah. a, a tip a tip for people, um, if, you, if you aren't already doing it, and I th- I'm going to guess that you can pop the dropper tops off Army Painter. I don't have these particular ones, but... Um, if you put um, a ball bearing inside of your uh, paint bottles, um, you effectively create a rattle in there so that you can, when you're shaking, it agitates your paint. Uh, so just when a full bottle of paint, it's really hard to get any separation because there's not a lot of room. But if you add that agitator in there, then you can always do that. I just would ca- So this is something that I tell people and it, it makes sense, but it, it kind of doesn't make sense unless you hear this. You can't just go throw any hunk of metal or anything like of, of that inside of your paint because some metals are cheap and if they have some sort of uh, coating on them, the metal can actually react and could create some rust or discolor your paint. 
Um, and then that will not necessarily happen instantaneous, but it can happen over time. So you're gradually going to change the shade of your paint. Um, mm -hmm. So although they're, uh, you know, you can find lots. I actually bought a, a container from AK Interactive. They're stainless steel. They don't wear off at all. And they're actually for that. Um, they're a few bucks, but what I do is I throw them in my, I throw them in pretty much every bottle that I'm using. Um, so if you're going to spend a few bucks, cause again, it helps you for that separation issue. Um, and also it's just, it's good practice to have that. And when you're giving your paint a shake, you don't have to sit there for five minutes shaking it. You can mm -hmm. exponentially speed up the time by having an agitator in uh, each bottle. Yeah. So yeah. So just yeah. a little, just a little, uh, hobby tip for sure. Um, so we won't waylay this long. I'm just going to make this image disappear. I'm going to pop up the colors. I do really actually like the names. I think they were clever with these. Oh yeah, these. the names are great. Yeah, and yep. uh, I know Krabuck was giving some speculation around uh, even the paints. Uh, so oh a shout God. out. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like he was talking about, like, well, I thought about I thought about you when he talked about Jawa's this death. Confirmed. Dathomir yeah. skies and I was like well there's Joe's scheme right there yeah. you know there's there's your night witches or oh, night man. sisters I, so. oh, I see I see Mother Talzin confirmed Dathomir yep. skies Mother Talzin confirmed Na okay then I'm gonna go out in this speculation right here Nabu Plains oh. giant shield walking dinosaur confirmed Jar Jar confirmed fair I mean that was a yeah. given I mean that's low hanging fruit there for sure <laughs> oh um, my God. what else are they got in here yeah, Anakin. Grievous, Grievous Mask, Grievous confirmed. Just, yeah, just <laughs> wailed on a limb there. Grievous confirmed. Hot take. <laughs> yep. And then Catherine Rex Blue too. I'll throw that one in too. So Rex yeah. confirmed. But Jedi I mean, Order robes, huh? Camino, Does that mean we're getting all the Jedi? Oh. Camino Stormcloud. Django mm. confirmed. <laughs> I was just thinking we were going to have a bunch of Camino uh, <laughs> folks walking around. They're 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 seven inches tall each. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Kaminoans. Yeah, yeah, just a bunch of long necks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Star Wars racism, just a bunch of long necks walking around. Uh, Sick of them. <laughs> uh, Christophsis crystal. Uh, what else we got on here? Geonosian soil. Oh, fair yeah, enough. Geonosians okay. confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just shout out to FFG. That color would have been really great. You know, when I was building a certain project. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this would have made my work a lot easier, for sure. But anyway, um, just wanted to say that, again, clever on the names, nice yeah, to have. It's, it's nice that it's out. It's good for people that are just getting into the game now. Yeah, you probably missed the boat on, uh, you know, th honestly, probably the people that are complaining are probably like people like me and you. We already have paint. Right. We already, we, we weren't not buying the core sets because there was no paint to go with them. And just now we're just, you know throwing a couple ribs in there because the paint set seems to be a little offset and came out speaking of which right. something here, I'll, let me say this because this is something i'm probably not supposed to say um but it's it's true so the G, uh ffg has done other like army painter paint sets before um notoriously they did it for the dead game rune wars well here's the thing about anything that had the rune wars label on it and especially like paint sets like this, they sat on shelves and then they went on clearance and then they became amazing deals. Okay. Because when something is like 40% off and you're getting like 15 paints, you're like, man, I'm getting these paints for like 80 cents. Now it's worth it. I'm just going to pick up a whole bunch of extra paints. So you're you saying know? to not buy them now? I'm saying so that, that you get deals I'm later? That, yes, that's what I'm saying for <laughs> Fair. I'm saying, hey, if you don't, 100% buy them if you don't own paint. If you own a million paints already and you don't see a reason to buy these, I don't think it's far off to expect that these things will be on clearance in a year or two. And because they're sealed, they're probably still fine. And then you could supplement yourself with some extra paints for cheap. Yeah, I'm fairly Salt. certain you can find a Star Wars named paint conversion to just regular color conversion yeah, yeah. somewhere. So, right. um, And the way I like to see it, too, is like uh, th this is kind of more expensive paint from painting minis. But if I'm going to get a bunch of them for cheap, it's nice for painting terrain, too. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, you're going to you're going to blow through a lot of uh, like it's really so I, I once put a photo up of like I have like 50 shades of gray paint um, mm -hmm. 
when I'm painting big things, I might go through, like blow through like six, seven, eight bottles of that. I could probably go find rattle cans and things like that or color a color match. However, um, oftentimes there's just that one particular color that you really like. I have a few like go-to grays. Um, and so I, I like those. I think that the diversity that comes in the paint ranges, whether it's Army Painter, Vallejo, what have you, GW, um, there is no shortage. Like you, people shouldn't have to mix colors. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's absolutely no reason. So people, always, I, I mean, I get questions sometimes about mixing and how you go about mixing. I generally don't straight out of the bottle because I can find yeah. a color if I need it. I mean, if I can't find a color, I mean, the eye can only see so many colors anyway. Um, there's there's no shortage. So I think the range is quite small. Um, mm -hmm. But that being said, th even in that very small range, I think you can get a, a diverse look and you can supplement yeah. with other with other uh, colors as well. I think it's just the convenience of uh, having them, again, in that small pack, and it's a great starter space because that's one of the things that people can kind of go down that rabbit hole where you're you're buying paint all the time, but you're just buying them. You're spending like four bucks to get one color that you might paint one lightsaber with, and it's like, mm -hmm. I'm never going to use that color on anything else again. So these, these ranges, I think, probably provide you enough of a small palette that you can do a little bit of mixing. Yeah. Um, but truthfully, if I you're going to paint a ton, get just get separate colors. Yeah, and, and I mean, mixing is great for highlighting. Like, you take your base color and you add just a little bit of white in, you highlight yep. it up, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it's like, yeah, you get both of those colors in the set. You don't necessarily need to go buy 100 paints yep. if you don't want to jump all in financially right away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's definitely a good reason to pick this set up. Yep, for sure. Okay, well, we did a ton of stuff tonight, and yeah. we we had a lengthy episode, and um, but I think I, th I mean, I'm fairly excited about the the new releases. I'm, and I'm not necessarily sure if if Cassian or K2 or Aiden are going to find their way into any list that I'm playing, but I I think I like the structure of these packs. I like that there might be the I like the idea of four command cards. I like the idea that maybe. And we we talked about if you go back to like way back like episode two three we were talking about like things that we'd like to see in Legion and we talked about um, companion sets coming out. Yes. Like yes. long ago, like whatever episode we're on, many before that. Um, and I think that we're starting to see that come out now. Like I like these dual packs, and I can think of a bunch yeah. more tandems uh, that I'd like to see come out. Um, and I like the idea that you're not restricted to a unit being one thing because here's the thing We're eventually gonna run into a situation where I don't want to have people have to play Oh, I gotta take trusty old Luke again, and then mm -hmm. you know, whatever else I can fit so if you have some versatility within what Slot people are filling. I think that's really awesome. I I'm not saying yeah. that's what it is. It just looks I mean There's one keyword there that pretty definitively says they're a commander they are now can be an operative um but might we see some other things where it's like you're a troop uh or you're a specialist rather but if you subtract this or add this then you can be fill that core slot or drop a core slot right, to add right. one of these slots and we talked about that too so mm -hmm. um i'm i like what this what this box is suggesting that maybe uh in the in the future of the game yeah definitely Man, I want to see Saw Gerrera as an upgrade to Rebel Troopers. Mm, Saw Gerrera, yep. Yeah, that'd for be cool. sure. Yeah. All right, well, Rogue One is awesome. Go out and watch it. Refresh yourself on that stuff. See how cool Cassian and K2 and Jin are. Yep, uh, don't forget Jumanji 2 is dropping soon. So Yeah, don't forget to go out and see Jumanji 2 this Thursday night. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, uh, have a blast at Star Wars this week. It's a great week for it, so finally going to wrap up the saga let's see how it ends Albertine. <laughs> wow. voices in my head yeah. i can actually be normal and just say all voices the, in my head yeah. all the voices <laughs> yeah yep. for sure all right guys we'll talk to you later all right. cheers, cheers.